I often joke about how easy businesses would be if it weren't for all the people. <laughs> our people are the biggest variable to the success of our business, the good days and the bad days. So if we aren't commuting, communicating clearly, our teams start to clash and it, it can be a, have a real effect on our business. But imagine being able to decode the intricate dynamics, turn every challenge into an opportunity and elevate your team's synergy to levels that you've never experienced. And that's what we're talking about today on Marketing Live. Welcome to this episode. This is where small business owners and entrepreneurs develop new skills to help them create the jaw-dropping, show-stopping experience that their customers and their employees deserve. I am your host, service expert, expert and master of experiences, Mark Kane. I am absolutely thrilled that you are here with me today investing your time, the most important commodity you have, to join me today for today's episode. My guest is the retired spy, J.J. Brun. We'll put a spotlight on ways to understand, engage, and leverage your team's interpersonal skill sets. For every leader, entrepreneur, and visionary out there, this can be a game changer that you've been waiting for. My one ask today is that if you do know somebody who could use this information, please go ahead and share the link to this episode. You know, this past weekend, I had my roof redone. Uh, I'm going to give a big plug out to Rain Mountain Contracting here in Edmonton. Uh, they were absolutely great to work with, absolutely fantastic. But I had some great discussions with Aaron, who is the owner. We were talking about the challenge of finding the right people to do the work. During the peak season of the summer season, he had two crews working full time, all out. And the number one issue he had was people problems more than anything else. Miscommunication, productivity, tardiness, sloppiness. Aaron has better days when he has the right people on the right job doing the right task with, of course, the right mindset. So that brings us to our question of the day. When have you had what seems like a mismatch within your team? What we were talking about, the wrong person doing the wrong job with the wrong mindset. I'd love for you to be part of this conversation. Why don't you go ahead and share this episode on your favorite platform, hashtag it experience leadership and put your comments down so that we can have a discussion. You know, there's a pressing need for leaders and managers to comprehend the nuances of human behavior, to communicate effectively and foster a cohesive team environment. When these elements are in sync, businesses can experience amazing growth when they're working together. When it doesn't, businesses stagnate. They decrease, there's a huge decrease in morale and, and huge missed opportunities. My guest today, is nothing short of a game changer in the realm of understanding human behavior and human dynamics. J.J. Brun has traded in his spy gadgets for the art of human connections. <laughs> with three sparkling awards under his belt, best-selling pages filled with wisdom, and the title of Disc Trainer of Trainers, I am thrilled to have the James Bond of human behavior dynamics and effective communication with us today. <laughs> From the intense landscape of the Canadian Armed Forces Intelligence Branch to the front lines of training in human behavior, he is the secret weapon that every organization wish they had in their back pocket. JJ, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you. Thank you, Mark. What a pleasure. Never been introduced I as the James Bond. <laughs> Of, of, human of, of, of human behavior. <laughs> uh, uh, well, but, you know, there's a first time for everything. First name does start with a J. And second name starts with a B. So my yeah, name is Brun, Jean yeah. Brun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so Bond, James Bond. Yeah. Hmm. Makes you think. Yeah. Hmm. 
Uh, before we get too deep, <laughs> too deep in today's topic, could you tell us a little bit about how you serve your clients? Uh, for us, it's really, uh, every time we meet a client, we are at a disadvantage uh, because I do not know the three Ps. And I will often share that with the client that I don't know your people, I don't know your problems, and I don't know your protocols of how you go about doing business. And if I can be provided with that information, I can see if I'm a good fit for that client. And quite often it is a, a people issue. Um, seldom do they also follow their procedures, but it's like you've said at the beginning of uh, not having the right person in the right role uh, does provide some character building moments for the client. So for me, is for providing them with a an opportunity to decode one's preferred communication style or what I call decoding human capital. Everyone has a human capital waiting to be discovered because your human capital will provide you uh, your assets as in your strengths, because your strengths will carry you. Your lowest traits, your lowest talents should concern you. Not that you need to become, but you know, in case you have to do, you, you are able to go and visit uh, a certain quadrant. Uh, so for me, yes, uh, I am a very much um, a practitioner of the four temperament model of human behavior, also known as the DISC model. Mm -hmm. So for people in the uh, corporate lane, uh, you will often find yourself at a disadvantage in business and even in your personal life if you do not have a model of reference. So I came mm -hmm. to recognize that early on in the military when I was serving. And then when I opted to, you know what, after 20 years, it's time for me to diversify. It's time for me to start my own uh, training company. Uh, so I do more work now for the Canadian government outside uh, the usual uniform than when I was wearing the uniform. But you are at a disadvantage. Uh, even as a parent, uh, parenting your child, uh, you, all, you should parent your child according to how they are wired. And well, how do you know how they're wired? Well, that's by decoding one's preferred communication style, decoded their human capital. So I've simplified the information for application. I go into a, a quick way for, for them to understand how to do or how to decode one's preferred communication style by identifying the two P's. Uh, there's always a pace perspective when you're interacting with people and there's always a preferred priority perspective. So there's a preference in the pace, fast paced, yeah or slower pace as we have a preference mm -hmm. and we do have a preference towards task, accomplishing, doing things or towards leaning towards people, interacting, socializing with them. One is not better or worse. It is just different. Different. Yep. That we I, have, I have all to, four of these. In but us. I have to, I have to ask you before we get super deep into the episode today, mm -hmm. how did you become the quote unquote retired spy? Yeah. I never wanted to be the retired spy. Uh, my military career is I started with the uh, Royal 22nd Regiment, La Royal 22nd. So that's the infantry regiment up in Quebec City. And I did uh, five years in the combat arms. And then uh, I was very hard on my, on my body, uh, my knees, because uh, I have uh, a total of three knee surgeries, uh, major back surgery. And I knew I couldn't finish if I just stayed in the infantry, the combat arms. So I needed to change trade. And the only thing that really interested me was the intelligence branch. I thought that was cool, sexy, and, and exclusive. And I was drawn to that. And I got accepted and then spent 15 years within the intelligence branch. In the last 10 years is where I specialize in a field of human intelligence. There was no big strategic plan. It's more of, I was volunteered to go to Bosnia. So to becoming a, what we call a contact handler. So a contact handler is a person where he or she is sent into a hostile environment where he or she has to cultivate sources within that environment, determine their intention, modify their behaviors without using any Jedi mind tricks. Really, it's all about being able to connect with people by design and not by chance so that they become an informant for you. And at the end, I had over 100 eyeballs working for me or assisting me or getting a sense of what's happening on the terrain so that the commanding officer could make an informed decision as to where to allocate the resources. So within the intelligence community, the intelligence branch, there's many different collecting platforms. 
imagery intelligence. We've seen the James Bond's movie, the satellite image, right? Uh, signal intelligence. Oh yeah, we've seen those. Did it, we, yes, we can listen to your phone conversation. That's another collecting platform. Acoustic intelligence. Yes, well, we know when there's a submarine that just starts their engine, right? Because it emits a certain sound wave. But for me, where I specialized in was human intelligence. And that's my sort of like my claim to fame, being the first one selected for contact handling since the Second World War. So in the last five years of my career, I became a staff officer. So I've done both the blue collar and the white collar in regards to that uh, collecting platform. And after 20 years, I felt that I could do more outside. And that's where I, I decided to, you know what? Thank you very much for the 20 years. There's always been an entrepreneurial side to me. And this year we're celebrating 25 years at DHC Training Solutions. The DHC stands for Decoding Human Capital. So Training Solutions is what we provide. We're all about equipping people for works of service. Now, what's interesting is that I never wanted to be the retired spy and interpersonal skill sets, a communication expert, uh, world renowned speaker, but your brand is what people say it is. And I kept on being introduced when we had a networking event and somebody, hey, who's, who's that person you were talking to? Oh, that's JJ, he used to be a spy. Or, oh, that's JJ, he's, he's, he's a former operative. And, oh, that's JJ, you know what? I'd be careful if I was you because like he's, a, he's like, that, like that James Bond type of guy. So your brand is what people say it is. And I kept on being branded as JJ, the retired spy. And you know what? After eight years of trying to shy away from it, I decided to accept the brand because uh, it's easy to remember uh, the retired spy right. than uh, dhctrainingsolutions.com. Right. It's just, they just, they just remember it. Even my name, JJ, I got branded because my formal name, Mark, yeah, right? Jean Jacques. Jean Jacques Joseph Brun. Jean right. is my name. Jacques, that's my godfather's name. Joseph, yeah, because we had only one church in our village, Roman Catholic, so you get the Joseph attached to your name. But when I was working overseas, we had anywhere from five to seven different nationalities at the safe house. And one day I was alone in the operating, uh, operative, uh, not operative, but the operation room, and uh, a British colleague came in, and he sat down, and, in, and then he needed the stapler. And I had one on my side of the desk and he goes, hi, Jai Jai. And I'm like, ja, ja, ja. I connected the dots. There's nobody else in the room. He must be talking to me. And I answered, boom, I got branded. Which is and much JJ better than Gene Jack, I have to say, because Gene oh, Jack, doesn't, it's not good. Well, they, they <laughs> at one point, it's funny you say that, but they were actually saying that, I hey, better. Gene Jack. And they I thought better. they were bilingual. Uh, yeah. But when they, when, when my British colleague said, hi, JJ, and I answered, and then it became JJ, then everybody else Big that guy. I work with, they like that because it's easy to remember. It's easy to spell. Even all of the contacts, uh, well, those that I was handling, the case hand, the, that I was handling, they kind of like it because it's easy to remember JJ and then it's just two letters. Right. So it actually turned into a blessing. But, you know, what's uh, just, interesting about this, it, it's a great story because this is something that happens in businesses about acceptable behavior, right? No, at no time did anybody else ever call you JJ except for this one particular person. Now that he's called you JJ, everybody saw how well you took it and they thought, oh, well, that gives me permission to call him JJ as well. And so it's, it's going to be interesting because as we go through today's episode, I think this is this idea of human behavior is really going to be mm -hmm. peeling back this onion and we're going to be exposing some of it. Is it, is it like, I, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of small to medium sized businesses. Is it me or are business leaders now more challenged than ever with communication breakdown, morale issues, conflicts, uh, infighting? Um, are you seeing a lot of this? Is that a lot of the complaints you're seeing from your clients as well? Oh, Absolutely. I've been seeing this for 25 years and I've been in business for 25 years as in it's, it's, it's a good so, business. So what's, what's the, the root cause of this? Because it's, I've been in, in environments where I've seen completely the polar opposites where things yeah. really work really well. People are really good communicators, but in other ones you have this constant clash of mm -hmm. 
personalities and intentions and personal agendas and distrust and so on. So what's the root cause of what's creating some of this dynamic? Lack of awareness. It's um, I believe there's four levels of awareness. And if you really want to, uh, as a business owner and, and thrive, uh, you need to be made first aware of the four levels of awareness. The first one is environmental awareness. I define environmental awareness as a moment in time where you discover or experience something new. So when I was sent to the UK on my prisoner handling and tactical questioning course, my interrogator course, that was environmental awareness. I had no clue of what this course is going to be on, uh, except for interrogation. In the first hour, I was stripped naked, thrown into a cell and interrogated. That was not on the agenda. All I heard is who wants to go to the UK? Uh, so that's environmental awareness. We always go through environmental awareness. That's a moment in time where you discover and experience something new. The second phase will be situational awareness. That is a moment in time where you get to apply what you've discovered and experienced in the environmental awareness. So as a contact handler, okay, I was trained over in the UK as a contact handler. I deployed overseas to Bosnia Herzegovina. And after three days, I made it to the safe house. And this is where I had the opportunity to apply everything that I learned at spy school in regards to becoming a, an effective contact handler. So that's situational awareness. And quite often in business, people go to environmental awareness, they learn something new, they go back to the work environment, that situational awareness, oh, I need some more training. Oh, okay, got back, oh, I need to go to work, oh, I need some more training. And they keep on looping and looping and looping in that area, it's what I call a TED moment in temporary enthusiasm disorder, because they don't have self-awareness. See, self-awareness is how it is a moment in time where you discover your strengths and your blind spots so that you can protect yourself from yourself in times of need. Anyone that succeeds in their business does not have that human factor, that human dynamic awareness, understanding their strengths, their blind spots, Will often find themselves at a disadvantage. With that self-awareness, you can move to the fourth level, the highest level, which is the legacy awareness. And I would define legacy awareness as a moment in time where everything you've invested in your life outlives your life. So if you're going to build a company, you want it to thrive even after you've gone, that you've made a difference in people's lives. So for me, it is awareness and there's four levels of awareness that's required. And I've seldom seen an effective uh, owner not having a strong sense of self because then he can surround himself with his blind spots. So if he's good in this area, well, okay, who can, who, who can counter and, and correct the, the, the blind spot? Oh, he's good at, uh, in this area. Okay. Well, who can assist? in the other area. We all have our strengths. We all have our areas of growth. Uh, quite often law enforcement that I work with, they'll say strengths and weaknesses. And I know the HR population does not like the strengths or weak, the word weaknesses. Well, we all have our good days and we all have our bad days. We all have our days that we're grounded and we all have our days that we are ungrounded. So you know, we have our good days. We have our bad days, but it's predictable. It is predictable because with a model of reference, you can look at someone having a good day and you can predict what it looks like on a bad day, which means that you can give that person grace when they are living on a, in a bad day, because you understand they're just having a bad day. My, I taught this model to my daughter when she was eight years old to protect her from bullying at school. Right? I taught her the four temperament model of human behavior. That's awesome. You saw environment, Bosnia and Herzegovina, yeah. to really apply this and then come back home and apply it into my own environment at home and in my business. So one day my daughter's walking back from school and her best friend is on the other side of the road. And you can tell, you can tell by just looking at their body language, their physique, you could tell that they had a fight, right? They're walking in and then Mikael, that's the name of my daughter, Mikael comes in and, and we're looking at her, Judy and I, and I said, oh, Mikael, are you okay? Did, did you and Melissa have a, had a fight? 
to which she was able to say, oh, dad, it's okay. Her D, and then she was referring to the D trait dominant, direct, demanding, decisive, which for Melissa, was, that was her friend, well, still her friend. Um, oh, her D trait's out of control. She'll be fine tomorrow. Like, oh my gosh, she didn't take ownership of it. She left it to the other person. Because when she did the assessment, there's a self-assessment that you can do for a child. And the report gives you uh, one third of the reports for you as the parent. One third is for the child and one third is for the school teacher. So the one third for the child is self-esteem, self-worth increases in the child because the child sees that they're unique. They're not in competition. There's nothing wrong with them and they're wired a certain way and it even provides devotional directions for that child. The second third of the, which is what I wanted because I was afraid that I was going to raise my child as a sergeant major, a drill sergeant. I didn't want to be that person, right? We've always heard those war stories in the news. And that report told me how to parent to the traits of my child. Oh my gosh, that was easy. That was like, that was like gold. And then the last third of the reports for the school teacher. And we would always photocopy the last part of the report and give that to her teachers at the beginning of the year. So they would know how to teach to her traits. And then they would look at my daughter and look at the report, look at me, look at my daughter, look at the report, look at me. And where did you get these? Because they wanted reports for every kid in the room. Well, that's my human capital. That's my investment. I'm just giving you everything that you need to know in order to get the best out of this student for she will not be your problem child. So it's a long as in everything that I've done in, in the corporate applies in the personal life as in. Right. If you don't have a model of reference in business or in your personal life, you'll find yourself at a disadvantage of having more life character building moments, difficulties working with people. But when they have awareness, when you increase their, their level of awareness, this is saying a Dr. Robert A. Rome, Dr. Robert Rome. I don't know why I remember his middle name, A. <laughs> Dr. Rome. Uh, is, is, uh, the quote goes uh, the, the quote goes this way um, you cannot beware you cannot beware of something until you're first made aware and i like that because that's exactly true as in we need to have awareness increased self-awareness helps us so then when i started discerning this in my military career i, I just saw that there was four different levels there's right. one that we always go through the environment situation we get a chance to apply it it doesn't work we tend to go back down to environment go back to situation it doesn't work we go back and we keep looping and looping but until you have actually discovered yourself like taking an audit and yeah. and, and identifying because i think a last count there's over a hundred of these behavioral tools out there mark yes that people can use strength finder the neo the mmpi uh the bank code the uh, uh uh, the bird model, the Tainte model. Uh, there's just so many models out there. Uh, Enneagram, uh, Marsh Briggs. Uh, they're all designed for specific application. There's nothing wrong with those models. I would advocate pick one and master it. Put in the hours and use that as a frame of reference to help build your and uh, grow your business so that you can recruit the right people. Oh, by doing a role assessment. So there's a client in the States. That's exactly what we've assisted uh, them to do. And, uh, and they, they, they hire a lot of people and they had a lot of turnover. And I said, well, have you ever done a role assessment on the position that you're looking to hire? Uh, and they were like, a, a what? A, a, well, a, a role assessment. What do you mean? So I gave them an example. If we were going to look at hiring a brain surgeon, I need three people to do a questionnaire. I need somebody that's in charge of the brain surgeon. I need the brain surgeon that you want to model. Like your number, like that's, that's the traits that you're looking for. And I need somebody that supports the brain surgeon. And they're going to do a questionnaire. And then from there, we're going to have three uh, composite. I'm going to put them together and we're going to see uh, the blend that you're looking for. And then from there, you'll know exactly how to script or how to write your job description or your marketing piece, it becomes a behavioral based marketing strategy so that you attract exactly that style blend for that job interview. And that, that company's turnover dramatically reduced 
because they knew exactly what they were looking for and it's duplicatable and teachable. Yeah. So and what, what I like about that model though, is that it also tells you, it gives you parameters by, you can look at that model and say, what am I willing to compromise? What's a non-negotiable in each one of those three areas? And what is something that I can, I can pivot with so that you don't have to be so hard nosed about the outcome. Does that, does that work? Is, is that, uh, or am I off, off base? No, the model does provide you with, with options. Um, yeah. I'll give you another example. There's a client that they can only recruit internally as in, uh, and the model looks at, there's a, a, a persona that's more direct, a persona that's more inspiring, a persona that's more supportive and a persona that's more cautious. So outgoing reserve task and people. So there's four main quadrants. So these are the four main traits, dominant, direct, demanding, inspiring, influencing, inducing, uh, supportive, uh, shy, sensitive, uh, cautious, calculating, conscientious. Each of these personas prefer that you would communicate to them in a different form. So here are the four legal F words to better communicate with people. Some persona want you to be firm. Others want you to be fun. Some want you to be more friendly and others want to be more, you want you to be more factual when connecting with people matters. So by decoding one's preferred communication style, you know that I need them to say the same thing in four different ways, in a firm, fun, friendly, or factual matter. So you need to decode before you show, before you show a product or service and opportunity, you need to decode one's preferred communication style. And once you have that, then you can speak to their preferred language by simply saying the same thing in four different ways. I so love that. for the model itself has a simplicity towards it, yet it can go in greater depth as in, yes, there's four quadrants, there's 41 style blends. So we're looking at a blend combination. Oh, and based on the questionnaire, quite often will be anywhere from 19 to 20,000 possibilities of intensities. So I can go in depth. You know, I can be on the surface of this. I know there's 41 style blends. Uh, and then because I train trainers, uh, it's a model that's duplicatable. So it's, it's a great tool. One client so that the role was classified. They wanted that person at the beginning do a supportive role. Then at the end, they needed that person uh, to be promoted to a uh, more technical aspect. And at the end, they wanted that person to be in charge of the whole unit. So at the beginning, they want an S style blend of personality, but at the end, they wanted that person to becoming a D personality, which is completely opposite. It's like, hmm, so we looked at, well, maybe you're looking for a blend of a C, D, S style blend or in a C, S, D style blend or a D, S, C style. And we provided them with some options because they were looking for a certain blend. But if you're going to recruit on one and then I think that person is going to change their stripes to something else at the end, it's going to, you know, it's called turnover. So by having a style blend strategy, that person to, the, to this day is still in that position. So that, yeah, the position was classified within the intelligence uh, community, this organization, and they couldn't promote outside. They can only promote internally. I did not need to know the exact responsibility. I just needed to have the people that um, oversee the role. Uh, to be part of the process or the procedure. Right. Here's a thing that I, I like, I always, I like to say to people when communications breaks down and it will blame the process, not the people. Oh, I love that. It takes, it Pe takes the whole onus off the finger pointing because you know, I have a joke that, you know, when you're pointing a finger, you're pointing one finger at one person and three fingers at yourself. <laughs> I, you know, um, I'm, I'm loving this because there's a lot of applications to the business here in case somebody wants to get in hold, a hold of you. This is like, I mean, what you're talking about can, can seem really overwhelming. Um, if somebody mm. wants to get a hold of you to discuss this application for them, how can they reach you? Oh, 
theretiredspy.com. It's as simple as that. So easy. Yeah, um, you, because you, as soon as you go to that website, you can book a complimentary 30 minute call. You'll see my calendar. Love it. Uh, you, you can you can see it right there, and, and then we can we can have that conversation. Well, not leftover time, but quality time by booking it on our calendar. Then uh, we'll take thirty minutes. If it takes more, then then that's fine. That's I not a problem. It. I love it. I'd I'd like to get into how we can leverage this information to present new ideas and getting buy in, especially when change is difficult. And we'll get to that right after this. When the spotlight shines on your business, are customers applauding or yawning? In other words, how is your business performing? Make your business a star with a new book, Lights, Camera, Action, Business Operational Excellence Through the Lens of Live Theater by Mark Hain. Mark uses his business and acting experience to help you see your business like a live show so you can create a performance your customers will never forget. Buy Lights, Camera, Action today at your favorite online retailer or directly at markhain.com. Welcome back. I am speaking with the retired spy. Jean Jean Poon. Uh, we're having a good, great conversation. A lot of, I hope that you are, you know, getting ready to re, um, to rewatch this episode because JJ has dropped an awful lot of really valuable information along the the lines of the four awarenesses that we need and you know the different the four Fs of of that communication style and that sort of thing. Um, I I know that. Uh, you use a parable of the pencil as a metaphor. Can can you dive a little uh, bit into that? Yeah, let me see if I have one. Yeah. It's a simple instrument, right? So I don't know if you've ever seen one of these little things. <laughs> but this is known as the parable of the pencil. So the manufacturer, the creator, the inventor of this pencil, before he sends out the pencil, the parable says that, shares that there's three things, four things you need to learn before you can be ineffective uh, as a pencil. Number one, before you can be usable as a pencil, you must first be willing to be placed into somebody else's hand. You cannot be usable unless you're willing to be placed into somebody else's hand. Number two, in your life as a pencil, you're gonna go through some sharpening. A lot of sharpening. I'm not going to hide it. It's going to hurt you. Every sharpening that you're going to go through is going to hurt. Let me encourage you that you're going to be better because of the sharpening in your life as a pencil. Now, in your life as a pencil, you're also, number three, are going to make mistakes. I know. That's why I place an eraser at the end. Number four. Your true core value is not found on the outside. It's not your shape. It's not your size. It's not your color. It's what I placed inside of you that you'll find your true core value. Your value is found on the inside, not on the outside. And number five, and the one that's the most important one, creator, the inventor, the manufacturer of this pencil says this, you, know, you were designed, created and invented for one thing and one thing only. And that's to leave your mark on every surface you come in contact with. So those I five lessons. I love that. Yeah, the application for this as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, right? Or if you're going to be doing some training and some coaching to your staff, number one, are you teachable? Yeah. If you're not teachable, you can't do anything with them. Hey, are you willing to go through the pain of learning a new job, a new skill set, and failing and getting back up and failing, getting back up? Are you willing to go through those character building moments? Because you're going to be better because of all of the character building moments. You should embrace those mistakes and learn from them and grow. Hey, you're going to make mistakes? Yeah. You've got the right to start over with the information you have today. Your past does not dictate your future. Your past does prepare you for your future as you move ahead. Mm -hmm. Number four, it's not the outside. It's what's on the inside. So when you're doing a behavioral based approach, like the model of human behavior, it looks at the traits that are inside of us, not on the outside, because they're the true core value. 
and you were designed, created, and invented for one thing and, and one thing only. You're not here by accident. You're here to leave your mark on every surface you come in contact with, to make a difference in other people's lives. And the more that you can invest in others, the more it leaves a mark. I love so that. that at the and, end, you know, it's, what's interesting about that too is that last metaphor about leaving a mark. It could be a good mark, or it could be a really negative mark. It and doesn't you have that, that choice. Well, you know, the, the model does not evaluate on good and bad, as in you can right. use it for good, you can use it for bad. Sure. Uh, it's like, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't, that doesn't, that's brilliant. Great metaphor. Yeah. We were, we were talking before the break, we were talking about, of course, this, this whole idea of leveraging what you, uh, this idea of the disc, uh, model within the confines of our businesses. Um, I do know that, you know, we are in a era of unprecedented change. It, it started, mm -hmm. it didn't start with COVID, but COVID was really a catalyst for, for showing us how unpredictable the world is. How can we leverage what we've been talking about today in, in helping people adapt to change, being able to get buy-in on change, even the way maybe that we might propose a change? Mm -hmm. Change is going to happen. It, it, it evolves. It is, you can't, you can't, um, you can't stop it from, from happening. Just driving, uh, I live in Gatineau and just driving to uh, Ottawa, which is where I'm 10 kilometers from the downtown. There's all these uh, skyscrapers that they're building. They're updating uh, the roads. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they're putting new buildings. They're, uh, they're just changing the whole landscape. Change, change is going to happen. It's how you get to, uh, to either receive or resist this change. Based on your persona, on your preferred uh, communication style, on your temperament style, people either receive or resist change. Uh, during COVID, uh, one thing that I was working with a client and uh, he kept on bringing to the fact that, you know, there was nothing on goal setting uh, based on personalities. And he kept on whining and whining and whining. And he was not really doing his coaching session or the, the work that he was supposed to do in our coaching. And I said, well, do you want to want to keep on talking about this or do you want to do something about this? And he said, well, I want to do something about this. All right. So let's reverse engineer because that's how my brain works. And then at the end, uh, we cre I created this goal setting by personality styles. So it's, we did a research and we studied and we looked at just like change, same, the same principle in here. And based on the personas, how do you receive change or how do you receive goal setting? So there's a certain persona. So that's the, the D style, that persona that tends to be more outgoing and task oriented, uh, came out that, oh, goal setting. Uh, or change that's energizing, it's invigorating, it's success oriented, it's refreshing, it's exhilarating, uh, it's powerful, it's purposeful. That's what came out of the research. Wow. So then we looked at another persona that's more outgoing, yet people oriented. That's the I persona. And well, what came out from them? Uh, they said, well, goal setting and change. I don't know. They go with what's popular. So they like that because it's popular, it's exciting, it's being happy oriented, stimulating, thrilling, electrifying, and fun activities and treasure hunt. And so they were excited about this. It's like, wow, we've got something. So we then we went to the S persona, that persona that's more reserved and people oriented. And then when we introduced the word goal setting and, you know, and, and change, <laughs> this, this, this is what came out. Stressful, demanding, difficult, traumatic, frustrating pressure to perform activities due to timelines fearful and it's like how could that be see that happens to be my spouse that happens to be the, the style of my wife see i'm more on that d side of thing and she's more on the s side of thing and it's like wow that's interesting i wonder what the reserve and the task oriented what what well so we did the research there and they said in regards to change or in regards to goal setting, hesitant, focus on procedures versus goal, endless process due to their perfectionism, skepticism, complicated. So we saw a pattern and it applies in goal setting, but it also applies, Mark, in, in change. 
that there's two personas that seems to be more let's go let's embrace and and let's let's just go and do and they're they're less uh um challenged by you know they, or they don't have a wait and see but on the reserve side uh, they're a little bit more hesitant they're like wait 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 so it's a, it's not comfortable and there's a little bit more pushback it's not that they can't change because they have a different mindset and this is what i mean by mindset that deep persona that I talked to you at the beginning, dominant, direct, demanding, their mindset tends to be what? What are we doing? What's going on? What's up? That's pretty much what am I going to get out of this? So everything starts with the what. On the people side, outgoing and people, they think in more in terms of who? Who's doing this? Who's going to be there? Who am I going to see? Who's going to see me? They're all about the who. But on the S style blend, and this is where sometimes it takes a little bit more, they're all about the how. How are we gonna implement change? How are we gonna do this? How are we gonna work more effectively as a team if somebody doesn't want to buy in? They are really focused on the how. That's their mindset, they're wired for that. But on the other side of the reserve, the task side, their mindset's more on why. Why do we need to change? Why can't we stay the way it was? Why do we have to go back to the work environment uh, and cubicle? Why, why, why? So there's different personas that think differently. What, who, how, and why? So when it comes to change, it's not that they can't change. It's that their mindset goes into needing that information in order to embrace change. So it might require more time. When I'm working with a client, and I provide three options. I know the D and the I can answer me quickly, but the S and the C, they need to think things through. Not a problem. And so you have to build and that so, into your process. Then it's just like, would it be okay if I follow up with you in the next 48 hours and so that you have a little bit more time to think things through and, and, and come up with some questions or uh, that, that pops up. They appreciate if that. Me, sorry, if you give me 48 hours, I'm going to forget what the question was. <laughs> and it's just different, right? Yeah. So, yeah. and if you didn't have that model of reference, you'd, you'd look at people and say, why can't you be normal? Yeah. Like me, yeah. right? Normal and then it's like we sit on a dryer. And we start the, the label, the characterize and pigeonhole. See, yeah. the model itself, it was designed by William Malton Marsden. Uh, and he's also the forefather, uh, pioneered the, the polygraph. So I, yeah. cause I do training in, in that area in physiology and body language. So I kind of like that the fact that I'm better at reading body language because I have the model of reference, because I have the four temperament model, because they will project a certain way. And if you didn't have a model of reference, you may think that per the person is embellishing or lying or deceiving you when in fact, they're just communicating based on how they're wired, you know, and it's just different. Uh, from a uh, from a Nash perspective, a D persona may may come across as yelling at them, and they're not. They're just talking loudly because yeah. that's how they tend to communicate. So it does provide a lot of uh, opportunities to avoid the misunderstanding because yeah. you know, we tend to label what we don't understand. Because and it's easier quite... to do that, right? It, it, because it it defers blame from ourselves. It's not my fault. It's not my fault that they're slow. It's not my fault that they're super aggressive or it's not my, right? Um, for, for people who are taking this in and realizing that there's this mechanism out there that they could leverage, do you have any cautionaries about stepping into this realm? Um, as And the reason why I focus on cautionaries a little bit is I do believe there are a lot of managers out there who are band-aiders. They're looking for the next quick fix or the next uh, thing that yeah. they can make the policy of the month. What, what kind of cautionaries would you have for anybody wanting to implement this style of assessments? Well, uh, you have to be willing to invest in, in the long term because what I like about this model is a force multiplier. It's the same language that can be applied in 50 layers within your business. You can apply it in regards to recruiting. You can apply it in regards to training. You can apply it in regards to leadership, team building, interaction dynamics, presenting, uh, selling with style, showing to close. 
It's the same model applied in 50 different ways. It is a force multiplier. Other behavioral tools out there is basically a one layer. Like if you take the bird model, well, the bird model was not designed for multiple uh, application. The bird model was designed really to have a, a conversation in regards to identifying to a certain persona. Okay, you're an eagle, uh, you're a, a parakeet or, or, or a pea, uh, yeah, a parakeet, uh, you're a dove or you're an owl. Well, that's, that's dangerous when you're using animals because you also have the definition of that animal that comes to your mind. Oh, an owl. Well, everybody wants to have wisdom. Owl is wisdom. It's, it's sage. Well, it depends upon which culture because in Lebanon, an owl has a negative connotation. See, so you have to be careful in regards to the model that you want to use. Why I like the four temperament model of human behavior because it's just a letter. It's a, a color that characterizes the trait, a symbol that characterizes the trait, a letter that characterizes the trait. You're not a letter, you're not a symbol, you're not a color. You're a beautiful blend of all four of these traits to a lesser, greater degree. There's nothing wrong with you. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. We just have tendencies. And I like the fact that the model is an observable uh, model, as in you can actually observe the traits. In, in print, you're looking at our politicians. You cannot not communicate. They can be scripted, they can prepare, they do all of this, right? But it's just a matter of time, right? As in uh, it just what really goes to the heart of the matter is your ability to ask effective questions. Mm -hmm. What made me different than all the other uh, operatives in Bosnia is that I'm a double dose of task. I don't have these people skills. That's a learned skill that I had to learn. I learned the four temperament model of human behavior so that I can say the same thing in four different ways. I represent 10% of the general population. So Dr. Rome, uh, back in 1999, a defining moment in my life, said to me, JJ, let me show you how you can annoy 90% of the general population just by being yourself. He had my attention because I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I knew that in the military. I knew that in the corporate. I'm not everyone's cup of tea, uh, but I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm making a difference. But then he was, you know, but what I got from that is that I'm leaving a lot of money, a lot of opportunities on the table right. because I'm not speaking their language. Right. And then he said, would you be willing, JJ? That's a personal choice. Would you be willing to learn to say the same thing in a different way? So I didn't feel that he was trying to change me. Yeah. Basically, he was saying, I, can I help you to get you more results? If, you, if I could show you how to get better results, would, would that be okay? And I'm like, yes. That, that's like being the guy to go up to the guy. Can I show you how to sharpen your saw <laughs> to make yes. your tools better? Uh, this has been a fast, I, I've enjoyed this conversation immensely. And I, I think that we could go on for hours uh, digging deeper into this. Do you have any last thoughts about what we've been talking about today? Um, because I do know like this, this whole model if managers mm -hmm. could leverage it better, they would have better communication skills within their team. Um, but as we wrap up, any last thoughts? Well, um, I would encourage them to go to the retirespy.com yeah. and uh, go, I think the first page, there may be a little pop-up window or you can go completely on the bottom, but you'll find the 10 most effective, feel-good, ice-breaking questions. Because in the next month, we're going to be offering a complimentary four lessons, four lessons. We just finished it. Uh, it's called, I don't think you can see it here, but mastering the art of interpersonal relationships. So as opposed to selling things, so you know what, uh, let's turn this into a free event. So we're actually going to provide, uh, people, um, uh, an opportunity to do, to take four lessons in order to master it. So there's no, self-assessment or whatnot. It'll just be a conversation, but they'll be able to provide that to anybody within their circle because not every company has a budget for, for training. Sure. Well, at least this one, everyone could actually do this, but how you get access to it? Well, just get into the funnel. Uh, so the first, first gift would be the, the 10 most effective feel good ice breaking questions, yep. uh, which is what I made. What's what made me different. Uh, it really is what made me different when I was, uh, uh in Bosnia. 
Yeah. Uh, so I use that to break the ice and uh, to start a conversation. And the better you are at asking questions, the better you are at reading people because you it. cannot not communicate. You'll see the physiology. Are they going to talk fast or are they going to talk slowly? Are they going to be very interactive and smiling and, and, and enthusiastic? And are they really going to be stoic and, and short and sweet in their answers? You sure. cannot not communicate. You can discern their preferred communication style real fast uh, with that approach. So the better you are at asking questions, the better you are at reading their preferred communication style or at least discerning it. So have some fun. There's two little missions and it's, it's written in a, so sort of like a mission impossible. Dun, 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 dun. I've been humming that same thong all the way yeah. through this episode, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, but there's, there's a lot of content in there, but at the end, you'll see my three, four, five approach, three words. Okay. I'm just curious. Yeah. I love Every it. time you say that to people, what happens? Subconscious mind stays open because we have so many shinies, right? Yep. They say, what, what? Well, you know how I'm tr that's a question to establish a form of rapport, a sure. connection. So the head goes up and down. Would it be okay if I follow up with you, if we sit on you know, break bread, if we, I send you this, uh, uh, latest report, if I provide you a complimentary access. So the three, four, five is actually inside the 10 most effective feel good ice breaking questions. I if you that. so choose to accept the mission, well, I'm, I'm so. going to accept it because I think those kinds of questions, even if you have them written next to your computer, when you're making calls and that sort of thing can be so helpful, even when dealing with your employees, um, especially mm -hmm. during times of conflict. Uh, JJ, this has been absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much for sharing your brilliance and your energy and your passion with us today. It's been so great having you on the show. My pleasure, Mark. Have a great Thanks day. Take care. Why don't you let me know if this was of value to you? As always, my offer stands. If you would like 30 minutes of my time to help you brainstorm your business with you and your team, feel free to book a time that works for your calendar. The link is in the show notes. It is the one marked meetwith.markhain.com. It would be my absolute honor to be of service. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and leave a comment or a review about this episode? I'd love to get your feedback. Was this of value to you? And of course, remember to subscribe. That'll give you early notification whenever I'm ready to launch the next best episode. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Mark Hain. I hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope you dare to be the exception.